Another topic that sometimes shows up doing advanced morphogenetics is the relationship between genes. Now, uh, Mendel tried to study some of that in terms of the inheritance relationship, and he noticed that there was an independent assortment between traits. And even though he was technically not exactly right about that, and we'll learn about that in the next chapter, but there's actually some genetic relationships that exist between the genes which lead to a certain trait. So these are things that are not talking about how a trait relates to another trait, but it's talking about how genes interact to make one trait. And so it's not so much as how two traits interact, but how many, how two genes interact to create a trait. The first example of this is, uh, is actually something that we call epistasis. Now, I know it's a big word and some people get confused about it, but stasis means to stay the same. They needs to stay the same. Now, epistasis is when you, a look will change or stay the same depends on, depending on another gene. So maybe you forget that this part here exists. So this does not exist. And maybe you just realize that this gene here, Y, creates a situation where you get Z, which is black, right? So by having a certain gene, you have a, this enzyme, you have a certain thing. But what if there is... It, this gene will only work if another gene uh, depends on that. So that's what epistasis is all about. So let me give you an example of that. What if this gene here, gene Y, tells you how to make melanin? How to make melanin? Now, melanin is actually uh, the thing that makes the skin color of your skin. So let's say this, this gene is involved in making your skin color. Now, this gene will tell you how much of melanin to make. So if this gene... That says make a lot of a lot a lot of a lot of melanin, you're going to be black. But if the gene says do not make a lot of melanin, you're going to be white. And so this gene controls the amount of melanin in your skin cells or your hair cells or your, or your eyes or things like that. Meanwhile, this gene here teaches you how to make melanin. melanin. So both genes are involved with melanin, but this one teaches you how to make it, and this one teaches you how much of it to make. Now, thinking about this, does it matter how much to make if you cannot make it? Do you see what I'm saying now? This gene Y is useless if you don't have gene X. If you can't make melanin, it doesn't matter how much the body is telling you to make it. So even if you're born from black parents, which tell you to make a lot, a lot of black, uh, black uh, uh, pigments, you're not going to be black if you have a defect, which prevents you from doing that. So that means specific allelic conditions, or you see that when you have a defective group of genes where you don't, that's a, don't, where you, you can't make melanin, what will happen? you're going to not make as much of it. Now, notice that this, this rat right here was being told to make a lot of melanin. He was a big B, big B. So he was supposed to make, be black, dark, dark mouse. This one right here, um, maybe, maybe could have been a little brownish. And this one of here should have been white or lighter color. But in general, it's just white. Because you cannot, these, all these mice, they cannot make melanin, so they're white. So it doesn't matter how much melanin they're told to make, because they can't make it. So you see that the way it actually works, by the way, it's more complicated than that. A specific relationship between both genes actually determines whether or not you can actually make melanin and how much of it you make. I was simplifying it, but basically... Both genes work together to decide whether or not you know how to and how much of the melanin to make. And so the albinos are people who are, or the, are the mice who cannot produce the melanin because they have a specific combination of genes. More specifically, it's the little c, little c that really screws them up, which stops them from being able to doing melanin altogether. Now, the, my, the other mice uh, also have a relationship here. When you have a recessive for the B, little b, little b, it also causes a color change. So that's because little b, little b tells you to be lighter. But big b, big b, little b, or big b, big b tells you to be darker. So these guys are lighter, all right? So this mice should have been dark. This mice should have been dark. This mice should have been dark. This one should have been tan. 
except that they are not because they cannot make melanin because this gene teaches them how to make it. So that's epistasis. One gene depends on another gene for in order for its function. Now another way to think of a genetic relationship is when one gene does multiple jobs. Now check it out. This gene A is actually involved in affecting trait 1, trait 2, and trait, trait 3. And the same thing can be said for genes B, C, D, N, so that means all four traits depend on all four genes. And each gene looking at it individually is doing multiple jobs. A good example of this is a gene that's, that in, that's in, involved in the generation of different kinds of cells. And you can see how that same gene is active in many different cells. So it's probably doing a different job in different cells. All right. So another thing that you have so a single gene with multiple traits is a is platropy. Platropy, which is this word right here, platropy. Now, it's like a gene is playing, it's doing too much. Now, a good example of this is cancer, the cancer gene. Uh, genes which are involved with cancer, tumor suppressor genes, actually do multiple jobs. So when you get a problem in that gene, you get multiple problems. So when you, you can change one gene and cause a lot of problems because of that. So if you have two brothers and they're identical, but one of the, their genes got a problem, that could cause multiple differences between them, even though it's just one gene. That's because of platropy. All right? And so the same thing with epistasis. Even if they have, even if they, they have gene Y is the same, that does not mean they are going to be the same. Because what if X is different, right? So one gene can depend on another or do multiple jobs in the cell.